Everybody, Merry Christmas. In uh, Lamentations chapter 3, there is an amazing passage about hope. Let me read to you the rendering by Eugene Peterson. When life is heavy and hard to take, go off by yourself, enter the silence, bow in prayer, don't ask questions. Wait for hope to appear. At Christmas, hope appears in the form of a new birth, immersed in the light from heaven. I wish for all of us during this Advent season that we find one moment when we are merry because God is with us. Good evening, Westlake, and welcome to the third Sunday in Advent. Let's prepare our hearts and enter into worship together.
different churches in Neo have been putting together a Christmas treasure hunt that we can use to involve family, friends, neighbours in the region. It's an experience that happens outside in four different locations around the city of Neil. And if you would like to participate, there is a flyer which we can send you um, as a PDF document where you would be able to do the treasure hunt together and discover what the secret of Christmas really is. In this third week of Advent, we remember the gift of joy we have in Christ. We remember the joy Mary felt when the angel Gabriel told her a special child would be born to her. A child who would save and deliver all people. Joy is the gift we all receive from the unconditional love Christ has for us. God wants us all to have joy. The angel who announced to the shepherds that Jesus had been born told them, Do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. As we light this candle, we remember that Christ came to bring true and everlasting joy to all people. As we light this candle, we are reminded that Christ came to save all people. Join me as we pray. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of joy we have in Christ. Help prepare our hearts for the Lord's coming by reminding us that Christ came for every person we meet, everywhere we go. We ask this in the name of the one born in Bethlehem, Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we continue our messy Christmas series, let's hear the sermon from Tommy. Hey, and welcome to the third Sunday of Advent. We are excited that you are here with us today. I'm excited to be able to give the message for today. And as I get started, I want to share with you uh, about a TV show that was popular in the United States about 15 or 20 years ago. It was a show called Fear Factor. And, and I thought it was a really interesting show because what they did is they put people in situations that people are, are very afraid of. You know, we, we hear about people having fear of heights or fear of public speaking, uh, fear of insects or reptiles. And so this show thought it would be a good idea to put people in those situations where they experience a lot of fear. Uh, I'm not sure if that show ever made it outside of the U.S. or not, uh, but here's a brief commercial for that show that I think you might find interesting as we get started for today. And just a, a quick heads up, uh, if you don't like seeing some gross things, you might want to look away for just the next couple 30 seconds or so. interesting about that show is it talks about it was billed as a reality TV show uh, but but when I think about it I don't know how realistic that show is you, I, I do think that we do have a lot of fear but all of the fears that they showed or mentioned seem to be like physical or tangible fears they, they never talked about emotional fears or social fears or even spiritual fears I mean, I, I get that it might not make for the greatest TV, but I don't know how realistic it is to think about being, you know, put in a coffin with, with a whole bunch of snakes, or I don't know about you, but I've never realistically found myself driving down the highway and trying to figure out how I drive on a ramp and get inside of a semi-truck. That's just not realistic. But I think we have some realistic fears that we face on a daily basis. We, we fear rejection. We, we walk around and, and we don't want other people to look at us and to reject us for the way that we talk or the way that we look or the things that we do. And so maybe we compromise some of our morals or part of who we are because we have a fear of being rejected. Or maybe we fear that we won't have enough. So we seek after that high paying job so that we can get as much as possible because we fear we won't have enough. Or, or maybe we fear that we won't be successful or seen as successful. So we work and work and work until we have nothing to give to anyone else because we fear 
that we won't be seen as successful or, or we fear the unknown and so we want to micromanage and control and hold on to things because we fear that if we don't know what is going on, we won't have control. Or, or maybe we fear being an outsider. Uh, and so we hold people at a distance because maybe if I hold people at a distance, I can reject them before they can reject me and, and I won't be seen as an outsider. Or, or maybe we fear the fear of missing out. You know, we, we just have this feeling in our hearts that somewhere something better is happening than is what is going on. So we struggle to find contentment with where we are. Or, or maybe we fear loneliness. Uh, so we surround ourselves with people that we shouldn't surround ourselves with. Or, or we do things to fit in so that we won't feel lonely. Or, or we look for things online to fill this empty, lonely void that we have. And then when we look at these fears, I think something interesting pops up in that the Bible can actually be more realistic than reality TV. Because I think that the Bible talks about fears. And it might sound weird to be talking about fear during Advent, uh, but I think we have messy fears. And, and I think fear comes up because it's really interesting. When you read through the Gospel accounts, a number of people are told to fear not. And, and oftentimes that, that, that it happens with an encounter with an angel, but I think we can also see some of the fears that these individuals might have been dealing with at that point in time. You know, I think, I think I've mentioned this before, uh, but when, when I read through Scripture, I, I love to view it or think of it in two different ways. Uh, one way it is a mirror. When, when I read Scripture, I feel like it's a mirror that just reflects my heart. And, and oftentimes, I don't like the reflection that I see. Uh, but, but I see the failures uh, of people, or, or I hear about Jesus' perfection, and I realize how far away I am from that. And so the Bible reflects my heart, and, and that is something that is difficult to deal with at times. Uh, but, but I also feel like the Bible is a window, and, and the Bible offers a window to see into God's character and to see God's love. And so I think that as we look at different fears of some of the people in, in the first Christmas, we will see a reflection of our own hearts, uh, but we'll also see a mirror into God's heart as well. So one of the first ones that we come to is Joseph. He is one of the first people that is told to fear not. And when I look at Joseph, I think that we can see that there's a reflection of our hearts that we fear what others will think of us. And I was reminded of this fear of what others will think of us the other day. I had the opportunity to, to Zoom with a few uh, athletes that I had coached a number of years ago. And, and a couple times a year, we like to get together and just kind of catch up and see what's going on. And they're all runners. And so uh, I, I'm trying to propose a race to Megan that I would like to do uh, in 2021. And, and I need some uh, backup. And, and so I thought it would be fun to ask uh, my runners, you know, hey, give me your opinion. And because uh, the runners, I thought that they would side with me. So I said, okay, this is the question I'm going to ask you. Uh, but before I ask you, can I record this conversation so I can show it to Megan later so that she can see it's a good idea for me to do this race. And as soon as I said I want to record it, guys and girls on the call were fixing their hair, fixing their clothes, and looking and just trying to make sure that when they got recorded, they looked as good as they could. And I just think that's so interesting. And in just a reflection that we fear what others are going to think of us. And, and when we look at Joseph in this situation, I can't help to think that he had a fear of what others are going to think of him as news broke about him and Mary. You know, at this time, he was going, headed to uh, the census, which was basically the world's or his world's biggest family gathering that was ever going to happen. And, and you can imagine that there were going to be whispers as Joseph and Mary walked into town. You know, what do you mean, what do you mean she's pregnant? They're not even married and she's already pregnant? What happened? Or, or, wait, I heard that Mary's pregnant, but Joseph's not the father. What's going on there? Mary's, they're not even married and she's already been unfaithful? What's going on? And, and, and some of his fears may have been how people would view him, and Joseph might have also been fearful of how other people would have been viewing Mary as well. But there's a fear of what others will think of us. But, but I think 
as, as we read in Matthew's account of this story and in what the angel says to Joseph, it just reminds us and gives us again that window into God's heart. And it says that God will save people from their sins. And, and that's just a beautiful promise and a beautiful reminder in the midst of our fear that God will save us from our sins. Because I think if, if I'm honest, when, when I fear what other people will think of me, I'm fearful that people are going to see my sins. I'm fearful that people are going to see my faults, they're going to see my failures, and they're going to see all the ways that I have messed up. And so I fear what they're going to think of me when they see me as a failure. But I love that God reminds us through Joseph, through this story, that he does see our sins, he does see our failures, he does see our faults. But he reminds us that God is going to save people from his sins. And in, in, the, in the birth of Jesus that we are celebrating, we see Jesus who said he, doesn't, he came to seek and save the lost. He did not come to seek and save the perfect or the ones who have everything all put together and the ones who don't need saving. No, Jesus came to seek and save the lost. And, and when I see the reflection of my heart that I'm fearful of what others are going to think of me, I'm reminded and can rejoice in the mirror of, or the window into God's heart and God's character where he came to seek and save the lost and save the people from their sins. You know, and as we keep looking at uh, the story, another person who heard the, heard, heard the words, fear not, was Mary. But I think it's really interesting because Mary and Joseph here give us a great picture and a reminder that the husband is wrong and the wife is correct. Uh, and maybe I'll regret having that go on film. Uh, but we, we saw Joseph kind of have this negative fear, but I think Mary actually has a really healthy fear, and in a, in a fear that maybe we should try to emulate. You see, when I look at Mary and, and look at her situation, I imagine that she had plans for the future. She, she knew that this was the kind of you know, house she wanted to get or the number of kids that she wanted to have, but all of a sudden she learns that she is pregnant and she wasn't anticipating that. And, and I would have, I have a fear of change. You know, I, I fear not having the control or not knowing what's going to happen. Uh, but but I, in that growing up, uh, I had a number of teachers who would give us, you know, the assignments of write down where you think you will be in five years or what do you hope to, to accomplish in the next five years. And it, and it was a good exercise, but I think I even adapted that into, into my relationship with, with God where I said, okay, God, Here's my five-year plan. Here's my 10-year plan. You know, I kind of wanted to hand him the piece of paper and say, this is what's going to happen. And God would read it and just kind of laugh and say, no, this isn't, this isn't what I have planned for you. And, and he would send it back to me. And, I, and I'd be like, but God, I thought this is the direction that we were headed. I thought that this is what was going to happen. And God says, no. And, and, and I get reminded of the words that were said to Jeremiah where it says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. See, I, I fear change, but Mary didn't fear that change. In fact, she embraces the change and embraces that journey, the journey that God has called her on. And I think that we can see something beautiful and something that we need to try and emulate in Mary that she takes God for his word and says, okay, this is where you are leading me. This is where you are guiding me. This is the journey that we are on and we're going to do this together. Uh, and, and while I have this fear of change, uh, and that's what I see in, in the mirror reflection, again, when we see a window into God's heart, something is, is whispered to Mary that I think is very encouraging and very helpful for us to remember. And, and Mary hears the words that God's kingdom will never end. And, and, and for, for me, someone who, who fears change, that just brings a fresh amount of refreshment and energy uh, to know that God's kingdom will never end. And, and God himself says that he never changes. And so while I may have this uh, fear of change, we can be reminded that we serve a God who has a kingdom that will never end, and we serve a God who will never change. And, and the third and final group that I want to look at that hear the words, fear not, are the shepherds. And, and I think when I look at the shepherds, I, I really enjoy 
their story and what we can learn from them. But I think the reflection that I see uh, of, of my heart and maybe our hearts is that there is a fear that we think that we're never going to be good enough for God or we're never going to be good enough to be used by God. You know, I think we can have this fear that uh, we can't tell other people uh, about Jesus, but that's left for the professionals and something that only the professionals can do. Uh, but when we look at the shepherds, and, and there is a little bit of debate as to their role in society, but things that I have seen point to me to think that they were not uh, the most respected group of people uh, in their society. Uh, they, they had to work outside, uh, living, sleeping, working with animals. Oftentimes they were seen as thieves uh, and seen as the people that were on the lower end of the socioeconomic uh, scale. Oftentimes they weren't seen to have good hygiene, so they were kind of the group of people that you could smell before you could see. Uh, and they weren't always allowed in political, social, or religious ceremonies as well. And, and so when we look at the shepherds, I don't think it's too far-fetched to think that they might have had a fear that they weren't good enough uh, for, for the good news of Jesus, or they weren't good enough to be used by Jesus. But something that is so amazing is that they are the, the first group of people that we know of who are told that Jesus is born. And, and, and they go and get to see and experience the baby Jesus. And, and one of my favorite words in, in perhaps all of uh, the, the gospel accounts of Jesus' birth talks about the shepherds and their response where it says that they left rejoicing and praising God for the things that they had seen and heard. And I just think that that's such a good thing for us to emulate and, and to try to uh, copy is when we have seen and heard and experienced about the love and goodness of Jesus, that we should go rejoicing and sharing that with people. You see, when the, the shepherds heard, were told to fear not, one of the things that they heard that shows the, the window into God's heart is that it is news for all people. It is news for all people. And so there are no people who, who aren't qualified because they're not good enough or they don't look like this or they don't talk like that or anything like that. Uh, we shouldn't have a fear of not being good enough because God has told us that his love, his goodness, his mercy is for all people of all time. And that is something that we can rejoice in as well. Uh, as, as we close for today, uh, I just want to show you a quick picture of a gingerbread house that I made last year. Uh, I am not artistic at all. My stick figure people are, are always disproportionate. I, I'm not good at building things. But this is a gingerbread house that I made. And to be honest, I was quite happy with it and quite proud with it. I mean, I know it could use a little bit of reconstruction and I know it's not the best gingerbread house that it has ever been made. But for me, I was pretty happy with it. Uh, and, and I think that this is an appropriate picture sh to show here because I actually think as we um, look at a messy Christmas, it can just be a reminder of some of the things, that, the way in which we act. You see, this is one side of the gingerbread house. And I think it's, it's the way that we often want to portray ourselves to other people. We want to portray ourselves as being put together, as everything is nice and neat. And yes, it, it might not be the best gingerbread house ever, uh, but it's standing and everything is working. And you know that it's a gingerbread house when, when you look at it. And, and that's the way that we want to present ourselves to other people. We want to present to ourselves that we're not messy, that we don't have sin in our lives, that we don't have fears, that we don't have doubts. But when you look at the gingerbread house from the other angle, I think it actually shows a lot of who we really are. And, and it shows that we are messy, that we are sinful people, that there are things that we need to have fixed and that can only be fixed by the grace and the love of God. And so when, as we close for today and as we continue to look at a messy Christmas, uh, we recognize that we have fears, that we have doubts, that we are messy people. But, but as we see that reflection of our own hearts, we see a, a window into God's heart, and we know that God came to save people from their sins. Uh, we know that God's kingdom will never end. And we know that the good news of Jesus Christ is for all people. 
So let's not have fear of what others will think of us, but reverence for who God is and what He has done in our lives. And may we go from here rejoicing and praising God for all of the amazing things that we have seen and heard. Amen.